Hi Eagles, you are flipping in fifth with me, Mrs. G. Today we're going to be talking about topic 10, lesson 4, and today's learning target is I can add mixed numbers. Today's vocabulary, it's really less of a vocabulary word and more of a reminder as to how we add and subtract fractions. So rewind back before winter break and when we were adding and subtracting fractions that had unlike denominators, the first thing we had to do was find equivalent fractions. So in this case, we have one-third and two-sixths. Well, we're going to need to change one-third so that our denominator is a six. Remember, whatever we do to the denominator, we also have to do to the numerator. So in this case, in order to make this a six, we have to think, what did we do to the three to make a six? Well, we multiplied it by two, so we have to do the same thing to the numerator. So now, instead of adding one-third plus two-sixths, we're adding two-sixths plus two-sixths. So you have to do the same thing when you're adding and subtracting mixed numbers. That's why I wanted to remind you how to do it. So here's our problem of the day. Bethany is making cupcakes and uses one and five eighths cups of sugar and four and one fourth cups of flour. How many cups of ingredients are in the bowl? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the question so we know exactly what it's asking us, and that is how many cups of ingredients are in the bowl. Next thing we're gonna do is highlight the important information. Here we have one and five eighths cups of sugar and four and one fourth cups of flour. So it's asking how many cups of ingredients are in the bowl so we know we're gonna to have to add. So here we have four and one fourth plus one and five eighths. But before we can possibly even think about adding these numbers together, we need to make sure that we have equivalent fractions. So let's just pull the fractions down and start there. So the first thing we're gonna do is ask ourselves, can we do something to the four to make it an eight? And yes, we can. So what would we do to the four to make it eight? Well, we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by two, which means we have to do the same thing to the numerator. So that one now becomes a two. So one fourth is equivalent to two eighths. And now we have a common denominator so we can add. Now comes the easy part. We just have to add the whole numbers. So here we have two plus five is seven, and we just bring the eight across, remember seven eighths, and then four plus one is five. So four and two eighths plus one and five eighths equals five and seven eighths. Go ahead and try this one on your own, two and two thirds plus one and one half. Remember, we need to find an equivalent fraction, so you have to find something that the two uh, denominators have in common, the least common denominator, change your numerators, and then add everything up. Go ahead and pause the video, work on this problem, and come back and see if your answer matches mine. Coming back in five, four, three, two, one. Did you get four and one sixth? Hmm, if you did, awesome job because this was kind of a tricky one. So let me show you how I got it. First, we're just going to worry about the fractions. So in order to find the least common denominator, we know the least common denominator of three and two is six. It doesn't matter if you use the wedding cake strategy or any of those other strategies that I taught you in topic nine, but if you need to go back and refresh your memory on how to find the least common denominator, you can go back and watch that video. So Six is our least common denominator, so whatever we did to the denominator, we had to do to the numerator. So in this case, what did we do to two to get six? Well, we multiplied it by three, so we do the same thing to the numerator. Three times one is three. Over here, to make this three a six, we had to multiply it by two, so we're gonna do the same thing with our numerator, and two times two is four. So now we have equivalent fractions, and we need to bring down our whole numbers. So our new problem is two and four sixths plus one and three sixths. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is add up our fractions. So four plus three is seven, bring the denominator over, and two plus one is three. But wait a minute, this isn't the answer I showed you. That's because you did not simplify. Seven sixths is an improper fraction. You can always simplify an improper fraction. I like to call it, if you're being improper, you're being naughty, and you need to simplify it or put it in timeout and make sure that it's fixed 
before you show it to the world again. So three and seven six needs to be simplified. Well, first of all, we're gonna think, how many holes are in seven six? Well, we know six sixths is one hole, so you're gonna take seven minus six, and that's gonna leave us with one sixth, and add one to the hole. So that equals four and one sixth. Again, we took six sixths away from this fraction, seven sixth minus six sixth, we got one sixth, but then with that whole fraction we took away from this, we added to the three. So that gives us four and one sixth. Now it's your turn to try. Here are your practice problems for tonight. In numbers one through five, I want you to add and simplify if necessary. Remember to find an equivalent fraction first. Go ahead and pause the video, solve these problems, show your work, it doesn't count if you don't show your work, and then come back and check your answers. Okay, coming back in five, four, three, two, one. Here are your answers for tonight's problems. Number one, the answer is three and one eighth. Number two, the answer is five and four ninths. Number three, the answer is eight and five sixths. Number four, the answer is 16 and 13 sixteenths. And number five, the answer is 10 and 3 fifths. Okay, before you go, make sure you've checked your work and you wrote how many answers you got correct out of five. Remember, be honest, this isn't for a grade. If you did not show your work, you better go back and do that now. Otherwise, you won't get any correct. Honestly, fill out your self-reflection. Could you teach a friend or are you still confused? And then use the bottom portion of your page to answer or fill in any questions you might still have. I hope you're having fun working with mixed numbers and improper fractions, and we will see you in class. Bye-bye.